why? Islam. Because this one was kicking, one was receiving, the other one was kicking out. You know what I'm saying? Kicking out the ether tech, right? Through those dynamo engines, some type of way. Right? So this is how, and this over here today is known as a Presbyterian church or something. Back then it wasn't. These windows were cymatic wave patterns uh, to show you what type of energy signature was being utilized in that particular building. They were like um, what you get today, you got uh, electricity. And its implications. And here we can actually see how it's functioning. Just next level. I think it's just an amazing depiction. Well, I think it adds to the simplicity of that other video that I translated. But this is the next level. And the magnetron, now this ties into the fash, or the fashies, however you want to pronounce it. And you can see, again, these antennas. I mean, these have nothing to do with religion. And everything is perfect. The symmetry, and even as he's describing here in the captions, you know, the different layers of copper, and even incorporating mercury, and completely electricity stations so those that's what these were like electricity stations that go out to send signal to this entire community so like a resonator islam islam says like a resonator okay and over here to the left is another picture of that other one i showed you right of uh of that 10 square miles in San Francisco that they burned down in all major cities all had a 10 square miles where all the holy, all the holy people, the people of God, the children of God, the, the, you know, the rulers live. All right. And that's where they burned down. And today you call those city halls. Today you call that Washington DC, which is a 10 square mile, right? That is where we used to kick it. Today is known as Washington, D.C., that 10 square miles, but that 10 square miles was everywhere. There was a Washington, D.C., 10 square miles in every major city, and that's where we were. Everybody else was living way out in, in, in huts, not huts, but log cabins with, with candlelight. That's why they get, tell you, oh, it was candlelight and we lived in cabins. No, you lived in cabins by candlelight. It's long, Grand Governor, and just to notice, you know, all of these uh, cities or places uh, have no smog, and it's there you beautiful. Go. It's beautiful. It's no it, smog. It, it doesn't have chemical uh, in chemicals in the air. Nothing is uh, causing pollution or Islam disrupting Islam. the That's health right. of life. Islam. Islam is a. They so over here, huh? Islam, ahead, I was just saying they was one with nature. Yeah, there was one because their buildings, maybe I'll do one on how they construct their buildings. These buildings are constructed like they constructed the pyramids on fire inside. When you see the technology buildings with the onion domes, really you're looking at a, just a different style pyramid. It was the same technology of all of our stuff. So it blended into the to the natural environment like a natural thing. Even birds thought the building was a tree, man. That's how natural it was. All right, but this picture over here to the left, right, is called the nat natorium, right? And I'm going to read here. This spectacular natorium was designed by so-called German-born Helen Architect, which is the lie of the deceit of the devil. John C. Pagelum and all that. It, Right. And it was in 1906 when they put this article out. The Nostradama was the most important example of Moorish architecture in the Northwest. Okay. 
even they had to admit to it back then, that this is Moorish architecture. So when you see the spires and you see all the little things like I've been showing you, even they have to admit that this is Moorish architecture and it's across the entire north, Northwest and all the way to the East uh, Causeways, uh, Florida and a few things like that, right? It's love, so, Greg, when you saw David in the window on that same picture you described before Israel and all that in the middle window right here on the uh, backside, right here where the signature is, it's in the middle. Huh? That star David in the window. You don't see oh, those down here, the star David, yeah. yeah. All right yeah. here, yeah. So yeah. good look, Mo. You got a good eye. You got a real good eye, my bro. So he's talking about this right here, that star of David, right? So that star of David is another cymatic pattern. If you, you can go get that on an oscilloscope, it's like you can get the majority of what are people calling window panes on churches. Those patterns can be made by oscilloscopes. But this also shows you that this Moorish architecture and its connection with the Jewish, with Jews, because you know we were them at a time, you know, also, all right? And this is in the Northwest, right? This beautiful place is in the Northwest near Utah and all that, where actually the Jewish communities are the Jews, you know, in Utah, meaning Judah, you know, was that, I do believe, right? So anyway, I just wanted to show you that Moorish architecture there. Now over here to the, uh, <laughs> over here to the right, Sultan on a pedestal. This place is called Dayton, Ohio. Its real name is Day's Town, D-E-Y. Day was a term we gave to European who were up under the rulership of the, uh, of the, of the uh, Khanate or the Caliphate, and they used to uh, work for us, you know what I'm saying, after we civilized and did everything and made sure that it was cool, about 30 some years, 33 years, we gave them privilege to becoming what are known as Days. Right in the days, work for the sultanates, and when they did wrong, we chopped their head off and put them over the arches of Morocco. And I got the picture to that. Now, the sultan on the pedestal is very important here because this is Dayton, Ohio, and what you're looking at is a memorial. This uh, this particular deal right here, you're looking at a memorial. It's called the um, um, something war memorial today. This is still here today. And those are in uh, Dayton, Ohio can go and look at it. You gotta get binoculars though. And if you blow this up, what you're gonna see right here on top is a sultan in a turban holding a scimitar and a shield. You can kind of see it here. I wish I could blow it up for you, but I can't for some reason. And uh, let's see. I'm done. All right, anyway, I don't know if you guys can see that, but I'll show you another picture I have. That we can blow it up. Do it on our phones. Oh, no, blow it up. Blow it up. Now, blow that little dude up. I can, see a, the I can see the turban. Yeah, and the he's sword. got a turban and a scimitar in his hand. So why in Ohio, and it's still there today, in Dayton, Ohio, meaning Day's Town, Ohio, there is a sultan on the pedestal of a uh, of a civil war memorial. Islam is that's a, 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 uh, from what I understood, Grand Governor, uh, from from the previous temple that that was supposed to be the original Morocco. Islam, well, Islamism. Now I do have a picture of what is known as Casablanca or Morocco, the White House, here in the Americas. Okay, so I'm giving you more reference that America was Moorish. Everything. Look here, over here. Uh, once again, what don't you see in this picture? Wires. No wires. wires. So how? Oh, yeah. And you see the aerials are antennae on the on this big building over here on these buildings. And right here, ain't no flags. Yeah, they, you can later see they them on the flag buildings. Poles. Later, they called them flagpoles. Ain't no flags on them in 1871 or eight, and, and, and previous. They did that to fool everybody, putting flags on poles on all the aerials around. They did that as a, I mean, I got pictures where they photoshopped back in the day because we had tech. Man, some of those photos is photoshopped. Islam, that thing at the top of that pole, did, did, that, did that spin? 
Good question. I'm not sure, Mo. Maybe at one time it did, bro. We were so advanced, man. I'm it's talking long. advanced. This you yeah, looking at so. remnants of an a highly advanced society prior to certain people coming through. Excuse me, prior to the devil being released up out of his prison. San Diego, Eureka, Georgia, and Colorado, 1860s, right? Colorado, uh, 1860. The one at the top is the Colorado picture. I mean, excuse me, the one at the top is San Diego. All right, they took this picture of more. That house has been there since probably the 18, 1700s. So is this one over here to the right at top is in Eureka. It literally, I can go walk and go see this home, you know. And it's all of these homes up here have this style. Now you got the one in the south in Georgia. This down, down to the left at the bottom is a Georgian house of plantations of one of the Cherokee chiefs who had the biggest slave plantation. The one you see to the left is in uh, Colorado. The earliest picture they got of this is in 1860. And this is a modern picture taken in the year 2000. It's still here with the exact same Moorish architecture. It's probably got mercury in some of those onion dome things up there. Because that's how we used to, you know, do it too, right? So all of that is the same architecture all the way across America. You got one in San Diego, one in Eureka, one in Georgia, one in Colorado. You see that sunlight in there? So oh, when you guys great. are walking around, and you're wondering what it looked like, what you did, look, it's everywhere. It's in plain view. Islam, they got one of those. They got a big one in Philadelphia, right in like uh, uh, the Northern Liberties area. It's a big, it's gold too. It's huge. That's right, Mo. Every yeah. single major city in America got one. They call them today state buildings. Okay. So when the thousand years are complete, Satan will be released from his prison and will go out to deceive the nations in the four corners of the earth. Now, the devil, Satan, was put into prison and was subjected to slavery. The devil would like you to believe he enslaved Asiacs or more for 400 years. Now, this is not the historical case. Blacks were enslaved for 400 years. Yes, black is a slave term given to a slave by a slaveholder. Thus, this term does not denote a particular race of people. Black means pale. Slav means slave. Slav is a race of people. In reality, it was the Slav race that was subjected to the 400 years of slavery. Therefore, I-453, or today, 1453 plus 400 years is about 1850, when the devil was released from his prison. From 1850 to 1900 is the other 50 years of the devil setting up his great deception. So from 1453 to 1900 is about 1,000 years that he was, you know, captured. And then after that, he was released. Prime questionnaire number 82, Satan was to be bound in part. You understand? And he was released around 1850 to the 19, up until the 1900s. When the thousand years was complete, Satan will be released from his prison. Eight, uh, Revelations eight, and will go out to deceive the nations in the four corners of the earth. Now the devil, Satan deceives the world the whole world through mental deception of what seems to be. His great weapon is he's an actor, everybody. Do you understand? His greatest weapon is he's an actor. Can you see this? Can y'all see that? As long as he, he's acting his way through everything. <laughs> All right. The magnetic pole shift when the devil was released from prison. No more purple skies until the resurrection of the dead. The Prophet Noble Juwali took a gang of pictures. Do you know if you put them in color in the right way, the, the, the background is always in purple. Did you realize that? His background is always in purple. It's the purple Not rain principle. It's the purple rain principle is talking about. So in 1857 was not merely the year the modern magnetic shift began. In other words, we had a pole shift in 1859, but it was also the year of the great solar storm in modern times. The only recent 
event strong enough to come close to the induction mechanism described in chapter five, whatever. A coincidence, the only super flare from the sun in centuries happened at the same time the earth began its magnetic uh, downward spiral. So there was a huge, when the devil, one of the signs, right, of the releasing of the devil or when the devil's going to be released is there was a gigantic magnetic pole shift. Today called climate change. From 1812 to 1860, there was an accumulation of great events to the great solar storm of 1859 or 1860. From the sun, from the sun's coronal ejection was caused the modern reset we're in, also, also known as, it's supposed to be as, the wrath of Allah. All right, in this picture you see is what you get, they're called sprites, but actually it happens when there's a major a solar flare. And so right now, when the poles shift, like it was doing back then, the magnetic field of the earth is depleted. Therefore, if a super solar flare comes in, you're going to get all of that. And it looks like this as it hits within our somewhat left atmosphere and it comes down as raining fire. We talking mad fire, bruh, that melts mountains. So when you go look in Arizona and Utah and you're looking at these weird mountains that almost look like a building, bro, they were buildings. The mountain was, we, we built in stone and we were giants. And it's unbelievable what was here. I'm talking unbelievable. It will blow your mind. Thousand foot statues of us. <laughs> yeah. Gone. The wrath of Allah. You turned your back. So, when the devil was released, or the, right, the Slavs, or the slave, the slave was only being a slave or bound because he was going against the great God. And if you can tell here, he was bound in Tartaria, known as Russia, where the Slavs come from, which is what? Asia Minor, the Caucasus, where they were locked up and all that. And then, then that great Slav slave population was released. And they were sent to what we call the great immigration of the eight, late 1800s and to the 1900s. And they smashed in here. All right. And then you got the Mongols or what is known as Indians today. Who were up under a particular you know, thing, too, because they were going against some stuff of the Tartarians, and then they were released and smashed over here. <laughs> While you were a slave being subjected to a European psychology deceived to be a Negro, the deceiver was dismantling, reconstructing the Moorish empire of the West. So the picture you see to the right below here is a picture after the great magnetic storm hit. And they call some of that the great fires. This one was a part of that great fire, too. Now, there was a great war, too. Well, we're not going, that's a different story for a different time. All right. But anyway, this is how people were released out of, out of their prison, the devil, and came in, keeping it 100. All right. People don't like to hear this part, but I, that's, we ain't hear what people want to hear in life. So the devil was released on you. This is him coming into the Americas, that great migration. I just flooded in. And if you look at this picture, they all look the same, wearing the exact same clothes, wearing the exact same hats, wearing the exact same everything. But these people were supposed to just be regular immigrants coming in. But why they all got the exact same? What time he coming round? What time? Who coming round? You don't be fooling with me. I'm talking about Legba. <laughs> Legba? Where you been at, Slick? He done changed his name to Scratch. I don't want none of your mm. sense. I got business with the man. Me, no bastard, ain't you? Forget it, honey. He's crazy. No, y'all sure you don't need a ride? He ain't riding with the likes of you. Why they all got the exact same look and same uniform? Why? Because they were workers. They were the slaves. They had a look. 
And the ones over here to the right are the ones who are left up, up out of the underground part. Now I'll show you a whole different series on these ones before they look like this. Uh, I got the pictures of what they look like. Before they went into the holes in the underground, underground city, cities, because some of them went deep up under there to get the, the high. They didn't look like this, but they look similar. But they didn't look like this. But this is what they look like when they were hitting, coming up out of there and coming, to, coming up in here. His deception started while you had amnesia. He erased you from your history. So 2757. Hold on really quick. To prove that point, let's go up to this particular video. 20. That's going to be a woman drink of or a man. Where you been at, uh, we he done changed his name to Scratch. Uh, We're going to get there. I have an address. Listen to the video first. That's a man. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, we're going to get there. That's the devil, honey. This dude then creeped out the underground. The reason why we put his ass and chopped his head off, because he was doing this in his empire. That man thought he was a woman. Okay? And this is a picture of eight, the late 1800s, my friend. This dude thought he was a woman. I got hundreds of pictures of these freaks. This is the devil who was released on you and made Hollywood and gave you the greatest deception you have ever seen. Part of their deception was erasing you out of history. Please listen up. So just... So we're looking here, and he's speaking on John Marshall. And as you can see a picture of him right here, that is the deception. This is how the devil deceived when he came out. Remember, Revelation 7 says he'll be released to go out and deceive the whole world. So how was the deception going down? Well, the middle picture is that he told you he built this. When we know this architecture stretches from, from Asia and Rut was known in Russia all the way down to the Americas, and this is Chicago, right? While you were enslaved, he was up in here learning how to have electricity, learning how everything works, and then told you in his great deception, this is, right? I hear you. Hello, everyone. Welcome to my channel. If you have viewed some of my previous videos, welcome back. This video should Thank really you, raise an Hill. eyebrow. It did for me when I was conducting the research. Okay, so this video, as you can see, is titled Prominent Americans You Assumed Were White. How many times when recording or listening to someone speak about history do we assume that that person that they are speaking about is white, just based on their title or position? Oftentimes we, including myself in the past tense, usually assume that the individual is white. This is not a coincidence. In my opinion, this is due to the fact that we as Americans have been conditioned to believe only white people, for the most part, have accomplished anything of importance. How often do we pay attention to historical figures' appearance? I know that while doing research for my videos, there were many books, articles, and newspapers that totally skipped over what the person looked like. In my opinion, this means you don't get a complete description of the person. Another factor, and this is a glaring issue, does the painting, photo, or etching even resemble the written description? Now, I have also come across many books, articles, and newspapers that do have a physical description of the person, but for some reason, these pieces of literature don't make it onto the high school or college course reading list. Although, on the occasions when they do appear on the reading list, and the subject has a shallow or light, tawny, brown, olive, dark, swarthy complexion, 
the darker complexion gets explained away as the person only having dark hair or eye color or both, which of course totally negates the meaning and definition of complexion. This false definition of complexion has been acceptable by academia for a very long time. However, now that the internet is available to the masses, it allows one to search thousands of keywords in seconds. You should soon come to realize, or at least some people realize, that there is something majorly wrong with how history has been portrayed. Again, as I always do in my videos, I will give you the definition of the word complexion. There are three basic categories when most people are described in history, complexion, hair color, and eye color. Although in modern times, we can change our complexion. Take Michael Jackson, for example. He kept his same hair color. However, he has had various complexions. He went from a dark complexion to a pale complexion. He is a perfect example of the extreme differences in complexions. He went from black to white. This is my theory. After conducting years of research, black Europeans of the colonial era and after did not consider themselves Negroes or what you and I would consider the typical black person today. There were several reasons for this and I don't wanna delve into it too heavily. I can do that in another video. But briefly, black Europeans obviously were of a different culture. They spoke European languages they had distinct accents. The elites considered themselves educated and intellectual. Some also had slight variations in eye color and hair texture. And this was due to hundreds of years of isolation and in many cases, mixtures of people. Although after looking at evidence of black European sculptures, books, journals, etchings, jewelry, and religious paintings, etc., it's clear that many black Europeans resemble the typical African American we see walking around today with all their variations and complexions, eye color and hair texture. As far as the term Negro and who the Europeans called Negro, they were referring to the Aboriginal people of America, the AKA Indians. Okay, I can hear people now. Oh, sure. Now the American Indians were black people too. This is exactly what I'm saying. There's a huge amount of evidence for this assertion but I am not going to cover that now. There are researchers who have hours and hours of research backing up this theory. I will do a video on that topic and link all the researchers to that video. Due to the obvious white supremacist tilt on what is provided to the public via our educational system, especially since the Woodrow Wilson administration, pointing out complexion is one of the only ways that Rap. Right. You well, lost your volume, Grango. And what is provided You're to stopped. the public via our educational system, especially since the Woodrow Wilson administration, pointing out complexion is one of the only ways that the reader can determine the ethnicity of the subject, or in modern terms, is the person black or white? I mentioned Woodrow Wilson because it was during his administration that much of the common historical knowledge was omitted, destroyed, and rewritten to be replaced by Woodrow Wilson's historical point of view, which was based on the Lost Cause narrative. The Lost Cause narratives typically portray the Confederacy as a noble, just, and heroic group. So with Wilson's presidential power and academic influence, and also having been the former president of Princeton University, the majority of the nation stopped using the common history books of that era and started using the historical books literally written by Woodrow Wilson, a 10 volume set of history books that in my estimation changed a nation. And just as a side note, the Board of Trustees of Princeton University on June 22nd, 2020 released a statement that read, Board of Trustees concludes that Wilson's racist views and policies make him an inappropriate namesake for the School of Public and International Affairs and Residential College. The current president, Christopher Eisgruber, I may have pronounced that wrong, in a statement when explaining why the board made its decision said, Wilson's racism was significant and consequential even by the standards of his own time. He segregated the federal civil service after it had been racially integrated for decades, thereby taking America backward in its pursuit of justice. 
he not only acquiesced in, but added to the persistent practice of racism in this country, a practice that continues to do harm today. He went on further to say, and I am paraphrasing, Princeton is part of an America that has too often disregarded, ignored, or excused racism, allowing the persistence of systems that discriminate against black people. And yet another leading cause of misinformation regarding European and American history was due to the direct and indirect influence of the Daughters of the Confederacy. A great video to watch regarding the impact they had on American history was created by Vox, V-O-X, on YouTube, and it's titled, How Southern Socialites Rewrote Civil War History. Okay, so Ooh. let me show you more evidence as to why I believe that Okay, so as you can see, he's narrating the deception of the devil how the devil came in and began to rewrite the historical narrative of who's really, you know, who was really here and putting their twist on it so that they can look like they're the ones. The prophet Noble Juwali tells us what title did Satan give himself? You know what I'm saying? God, right? He's taking the title of the ruler of the land. The ruler of the land is the one who came here and designed all the stuff you I was showing you and and uh, who's naturally here, whose place it is, and it's Moorish. Prophet Noble Juali also tells us that the European came in and asked for a 50 year mandate to develop, help develop some of the land. Now that European happened to look like somewhat you and I, you know, as he was just telling you, right? And that's that part I want you to see, is that prior to the great magnetic uh, reset that happened, the Europeans here, who were called Europeans and all that, right? Look like me and you. So who was George Washington then? Well, those were the servants. Those were the days. And they had that look. The reason they dressed like that because that was the day's dress. A day, D-E-Y. You know what I'm saying? So these particular people who were had a, a particular authority didn't mean that they were running anything. Prince Whipple was the one who put George Washington under study, you know what I'm saying, for X amount of years to make him a gentleman. All right. And this is why, you know, I showed you that picture of them being enslaved and the little boy having a hidden hand and all that type of stuff. Those were gentlemen, you know, so a lot of stuff was going down. Right. While they were reconstructing or dismantling and reconstructing the history to fit their narrative, as he's told, as he's telling you, I'm going to jump ahead a little bit here and uh, go to 27. What was it? 2757. Excuse me real quick, let me try to find this. Can you put this link inside the chat? Um, yeah, I'll put his whole video on Bands of Society if you guys want to watch it. If the life and character of John Marshall, Chief Justice of the Supreme So now we're just going to look quickly at John Marshall and he's going to give a, a show you how the deception of the devil uh, went down. Supreme Court of the United States by Horace Binney, 1835 also located in the Harvard Library. All right, on page 22, you can see there down at the bottom, I quote, he was about six feet high, straight and rather slender, of a dark complexion, and we're moving on to page 23 there at the top, and it continues on to say, showing little, if any, rosy red, yet good health. The outline of the face nearly a circle, and within that eyes dark to blackness, strong and penetrating, beaming with intelligence and good nature, an upright forehead rather low, was terminated in a horizontal line by a mass of raven black hair of unusual thickness and strength. The features of the face were in harmony with this outline and the temples fully developed. The result of this combination was interesting and very agreeable. The body and limbs indicated agility rather than strength in which, however, he was by no means deficient. He wore a purple or pale blue hunting shirt and trousers of the same material fringed with white. A round black hat mounted with buck's tail for a cockade crowned the figure and the man. Okay. So did you hear the description of Mr. Marshall here? John Marshall, one of the prominent figures of America. He said. Now, as you can see, they got picture down here 
to the uh, to the left, he a European looking dude. But in the description, in the opening, it said that his complexion was dark, swarthy, in other words, which means he, he looked like a brother, looked like one of us. But the deception of the devil, he puts the picture out to look like him. Now, we can go through this whole thing, and he'll show you half Chicago. All of the leaders were all brothers, but they put pictures out like him. And I will leave this entire video in Banson Society so you can watch it. All right. And it's very important that you do watch it so you can see the level of deception that the devil, after he was released, put down. And you wonder why all things are upside down and turned out because his job was to go on the planet after it was released from prison and deceive the whole world and bring them into a war. Now we're going to move on. Okay. The legacy was uh, being destroyed even in the Holy Land. You were replaced. This new Jew, no longer you. Your technology was reproduced, repurposed, even though you, even though you invented flight. The Moors invented flight, but they gave it to the Wright brothers. There were zeppelins throughout the entire Moorish uh, Tartarian Empire. What you see down to the right is a picture of them coming into harbor in one of the harbors uh, back east. That podium you see with the lion on it, right? They had another one of these back east and they put a statue on top of it of a man dressed as a woman and they called it the uh, Tower of Liberty. <laughs> okay, that's what they did. They took the lions off, which is the Lion of Judah, lions of the... The Phoenicians are the Moors, right? And the Griffins off and turned the light towers or the Tartarian laser. And, and so I mean, these were lasers right shooting out of here. But anyway, and docking I mooring mean, stations to charge the Zeppelins. Look, now he fired up the microwave and he's pointing at its cell phones. Now, they even removed you out of being the Jew of Jerusalem. Take a look. Fascinating. Hold on. Can y'all hear that? Yeah. Oh. Islam. 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 Yes. All right. So they even took you out of being, you know, look at the way you look. Look at the Jews. How did they look? They got fezes on. Turbans. Darker than dark. Out of it, right? So look at the level of deception from one corner of the world to all the way here. And you wonder why it's hard for us to know who we are or pinpoint our place. But until you understand what you've done, what does it look like, and the vastness of it, you'll still think it's a mystery in what you've done. All right. So here we have one of the princes, uh, Muhammad of Morocco in the painting. I have the real picture of this. This is the painting of a real picture, y'all. I got the real picture. I just couldn't find it. All right. And this was in late 1800s. Moorish architecture in Florida. Look to the right, upper right. Right? So we see Moorish architecture. Hold on really quick. I can move this darn thing. So we see Moorish architecture. We see the cymatic windows where you can put on an oscillation machine and you can get that pattern. All right. And in there at the towers, right, it tells what type of energy signature 
is coming in uh, to this building, which is more or less a control center, right? And um, as you can see, the beautiful arches. And guess where this is at still today? In Florida. That's a modern picture, y'all. That thing's been there since the early 18, the late 1700s. Down below, Morris Architecture in Florida. That same building is there today. From Asia to the Bays of Cali, right? So here we have to the right, the Bay of Tripoli, all right? In a Ottoman Tartarian headdress. So the Ottomans and Tartarians used to wear their turbans, right? He's got the sword. He's got the flag of Morocco, which was copied, right? Right here, which is the great scissors or the swords, but that's on the flag of Morocco. The Bay of Tripoli, all right? Now the Bay of Tripoli, right? Tripoli is a part of one of our, uh, our, our, our kingdoms, right? That we can find in chapter, I mean, on page three of the Holy Quran. But this is what the Bay looked like. And this is around 1830, this, this drawing was took place. All right, so you can see we're in the, he's in the royal garb of red and green. He's got the other blue up here, right? Goes all the way back to what I showed you guys in the last video. You got the feathers, right? Which represents his royalty of the Moroccan empire of the West. And then to the left over here, you see a modern, which is right now in Florida, what they've repurposed but they still kept it like this and it's pure Moorish. But you would never know because they hide it. This is a modern picture of the Florida today. Opa, Opalaka, Florida. So this is Opalaka, Florida in 1926. Municipal building. So the building you see right now is a Moorish government municipal building that was there in Florida. They took this picture in 1926 and it was in this condition. When they rolled up in there in Florida to try to dismantle the stuff in Florida by the guy who so-called invented the, the combustible engine for motorcycles. And when you do the history on him, he was nothing but a thief, right? Who was sent here to claim to have built this. But he got no history in architecture or anything. When you do the research on this fool, he couldn't build a, 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 a bird um, home, you know what I'm saying? A little bird house. But he got, he got, he, he gonna lay claim that he built this. But you do the history on that fool, you'll see he didn't build nothing. He was another European that claimed and claimed something that was already here. And look how beautiful this is. This is still here today. Hold on. Opa local Florida again, that municipal building, here it is again. This was in the late 50s at the above. And this was in the 20s or something, a postcard. Moors ran their own government. That's a municipal building. Here's another look of it, right? The same building in, in, in the early uh, 1900s. Here's the building when they first ran up on it and started to, this is the one they say, oh, this is how we constructed. This ain't no construction picture. This is a ref to refabish it, to, uh, what do they call that? To redo it again? To whitewash it? To make it new? You know what I'm saying? Refurbished. 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 Thank, you. Thank you so much. It's, re it's refurbished. That's what they were doing and claiming that they built something. All of it they refurbished. Why? Because I told you about the great storm that came. Right in your face all this time. This is a picture that was taken in 2022. 
the same building in its condition today, sitting there in Opaloka, Florida. Opaloka. This is what it looked like right now. You, but you, most Negroes who live in the city because it's part of the ghetto part, don't even know what they passing by. Matter of fact, they call a couple of Negroes spray painting on it. I had to send the police in to stop it. This is a historical landmark, and guess what it's labeled right now as? Abandoned. And you don't think we finna go get that? You crazy. Watch us. Hidden in plain view, Open Local, Florida. These are the homes in 2022 that are still there, built by Moors. And as you can see, this one got the crescent moon and star in the corner. Ala Alibaba Avenue, Open Local, Florida, another building that they transformed into a Danny's. They took your building and made it into a Danny's because niggas don't want they stuff. How about, how? what is this? H-A-L-A-L-E-A-H, Florida. Ha'ala, Florida. So this is Ha'ala, Florida. And a, another, ha another ha how's, it, how's it pronounced? Hialeah. 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 Hialeah, Florida was another municipal building, government building built by Moors. And y'all like, we don't run our government. How's that when we got municipal buildings everywhere? They want to tell you that that building was a church or, to, or, or, or a mosque. No, it wasn't. It was a municipal building. And down here to the extreme lower right, you got the entrance to that same Opalaka, Miami municipal building with a European in full garb standing on point on your stuff because you don't want to take it back. You don't want to go there and, and, and demand that it's, it be made into a historical site and get a bunch of money and clean that up. Some of y'all can probably even live there. But this is what it looked like. And it still looks like this right now. This moment, this, this house is there with a crescent moon on its driveway arch or whatever. But that, build, that house was built in the 1800s. What else we got here? Oh, Florida. Wow. Again, another building they rolled up on that was there and they repurposed it in Miami Springs. It's still there today. How about this one over here to the right? Another Florida building with the whole Tartarian Moorish architecture. They tore this one down to the right. They built, they rebuilt it in Disney World. They they got the same thing in Disney the, the World. Same thing in the, look, the same statue, some same four things look like that in Disney World. Straight up, Mo, because Disney World was a, a an estate. It, they didn't build that. That was a Moorish estate that they turned into an theme park. That's how lost we were, man. And we are today. They took. They took one of our Moorish estates in Florida and turned it into Disneyland. The Asiacs fell from a high spiritual and scientific status and can no longer see what's their culture, what their culture is, as it's right in front of their face. This picture to the right, building still stands today. That building was built in the late 1800s and the Moor once lived there. The building to the left, is what they use now as a big hotel in Miami. But that was a Moorish palace of a sultan in Miami, still there today. And they wonder why. And these are one of those towns that they said, don't let the sun go down on you, nigga. And you wonder why. Because it had got nothing but Moorish architecture up in there. And so what did they do? They scared the, the, the feeble Negro with a feeble mindset. They scared him. And they put, they put hoods on and act like ghosts and call themselves KKK. 
And the, what did the scary Negro do? Oh, yes, the boss. Because he forgot he was the greatest warrior on the planet. And who gives a damn about a man in the sheet talking crap? So now they dance and they forgot how to rule. So now the Negro dances. He got soul train. He can make an Afro. He can make everything look good. But is he really good? Is he really good? But he's dancing though. The Negro dances while other people take his, take his stuff. But thank Allah for our prop, for the art for our noble prophet, Drew Ali. Why? Because now we can see. We can see where we fell from. And that's just a little glimpse. I couldn't even put all the stuff I wanted in on this video for you. I mean, that's just a little glimpse. That stuff is still here right now, today, that historically you can claim historical preservation rights under. Thank you, Prophet Drew Ali, opening my eyes, for opening our eyes. Okay, and I hope this has made a little bit more sense about the uniting of Asia too. And that will be a little bit more the ending of my next video, and I'll get into- Islam, Gringo.